Hi everyone, welcome to a reading vlog, more specifically, a DNF vlog. So this is an idea for a vlog that I've had for a little while uh, because every once in a while I get in the mood to just clear out my TBR shelf, get rid of any books that I just am not as interested in anymore or I think might be a DNF if I did try to read them. Uh, and so I recently have been in that mood and I have been just pulling off a bunch of books off of my TBR shelf, but I still am not quite willing to let them go without at least giving them a chance, at least trying the books, even if I think they might be DNFs for me. And so I do this every once in a while where I will just take a stack of books that I think might be DNFs and try reading them to see what happens. Um, and a lot of times I'm right, sometimes I get surprised though, but I thought it might be interesting to take you all along with me on the journey of finding out if these books will surprise me or if they will DN or if they will be DNFs for me. So as I said, I have a big stack of books that are kind of in this category. So if you all like this type of vlog, maybe I can do more of them. But for today, or for this vlog, I just have three books to talk about. So these are the three books that we're going to be chatting about in this vlog. So the first one is The Gilded Wolves by Roshni Chakshi. This is a YA historical fantasy that I think is like a heist. And this is on this list because this is not a book that I ever really intended to read. I was never particularly interested in it, even though I do enjoy a heist, uh, but the time period and setting of this didn't really stand out to me as something I wanted to read, but I ended up with this book because it was given to me. Uh, so my dad read this book maybe like two and a half years ago, I think at this point, and he enjoyed it. And then he gave it to me because he's not someone who like hangs on to books after he reads them. Uh, and then I never read it. So I do feel kind of bad about that because clearly like the point of giving it to me, at least part of the point was so that I could read it and then we could talk about it, but it's been two and a half years and I have not read it. So that's my fault. Um, but yeah, it, I just have been putting it off because it wasn't something that I really intended to read. Uh, I did try listening to the audiobook at one point, maybe like a year ago or something, and I really didn't like the audiobook. There are two narrators, one of them was fine, but the other one was just like the most bland, monotone narrator I've ever heard, and I just could not stay focused on the book. I would just immediately zone out. Um, so I wanted to give it another shot reading it physically because it didn't really seem fair to DNF it based off the audiobook when most of my complaint was really about the narration, not the book itself. Uh, but from that time, I got about 60 pages into this book. I will be starting again from the beginning though with this one, even though I did get about 60 pages in because I don't really remember a lot from it. Oh, also with this, I wanted to give each of these books a rating on a scale of one to five uh, to let you all know kind of where, where I'm at with what my prediction is as to how likely it is I will DNF this book. Um, so a one will be a book that I think there's a solid chance I will actually finish the book. There may just be something that has made me feel like maybe it could be a DNF, maybe some review that I saw or something like that that's maybe a little suspicious, but a one is like solid chance I will actually read it. A five is for a book that's like, this is all a sham, it's all just for show, we know like we all know that I'm gonna DNF it, but I still have this like shred of misguided hope that maybe I would finish the book. Uh, so that's the scale that we're working with. In this case, for The Gilded Wolves, I think I will give this a three on that scale, which I know is not the most exciting reading, but I have some more extremes for the next two books. But this one, I really feel like it could go either way. I haven't heard anything terrible terrible about this book. It's just been very lukewarm for the most part. As I said, I do like a heist and my dad liked it, which we do have slightly different reading tastes, but still that makes me feel a little more optimistic about it. Um, 
but as I said, I just was never really drawn to this. So I really don't know what to expect about it. Oh God, there goes Kira wooing. What are they woofing at? <laughs> anyway, I don't really know what to expect from this. Uh, so we're going to give it a three. The other YA book that I have is The Dark Tide by Alicia Jasinska. This is a YA fantasy that I think is based on some like Scottish folktale, but I'm not really sure what folktale exactly. I think there's a female-female romance in this uh, between a girl and this queen who keeps kidnapping boys or something like that. Um, and this one, I actually am still very much interested in this. This was one of my most anticipated releases last year. It just has gotten some very lukewarm reviews, which is why it's I've been a little res, res, reticent to read it. Um, so I still feel like I could read this and I could enjoy it. It's also pretty short. It's only like 320 pages or something. Um, so I feel like this is the most likely for me to actually complete this book. So I'm going to give this a one, I think. I think that it is very possible I will finish the book. How much I will like it is yet to be seen, but I but this is a scale of one to five is how likely I will actually finish the book, not how much I think I will like it. So I'm giving this a one. Uh, and then the final book that I have for this vlog is The Game of Kings by Dorothy Dunnett. So this is an adult historical fiction that is set in 1547 Scotland. I think it's following this man who has been exiled, but like wrongfully exiled, and then he's trying to make his way back home um, and maybe like clear his name or something like that. This book, I... I so badly want to like it. The people who love this book or love this series love it so much and I also want to love it a lot. Uh, so much so that I have tried to read this book four times and I have put it down every single time. I tried to read it twice physically and I tried to read it twice as an audiobook and all of those times I just could not get into it. The farthest I've ever gotten into this book it's about 40 pages out of like 550 pages. So not that far. Uh, but I just so badly want to like it that I keep giving it chances. But this is the last chance. I'm going to make a decision in this video as to whether I am fin finishing this book or not. This is its last chance. <laughs> um, so this one, though... I feel like I'm gonna have to give this one a five though on my scale <sighs> because with the number of times I have already tried to read this and I have just put it down every single time, I feel like me trying to read it again is really just for show for myself to convince myself that it's okay for me to like DNF it because I just so badly want to like it. Um, yeah, so this is going to be a five. I still have that shred of misguided hope, but I do think it's misguided. I think this is going to be a DNF. So these are the three books that I'm going to be reading for this vlog. Uh, I will check in with you later to let you know which book I decide to start with and maybe give a better synopsis of the books as I actually get into them. Good morning. So it is Thursday now and I started one of the books last night so I thought I would do just a quick check-in since I did get started. I decided to start with The Game of Kings by Dorothy Dunnett uh, because this is the book that I felt like I was most likely to actually DNF so I thought I would just start here get it out of the way, <laughs> see what happens. This time reading it I decided to skip the prologue because when I went to start reading it I remembered I was reminded that there is a very long prologue that's like 25 to 30 pages uh, and I just remember it being so boring because it just is like info dumping history and I really didn't want to go through that again and technically I've already read it more than once probably so I think it's fair enough to just move on to chapter one um, especially because like even though I do think I will probably end up DNFing it I want to give this book a chance and I feel like its best chance is if I can just kind of 
jump straight into the part of the story that's about the characters and the plot and not this just like info dump of history set up. Uh, so that's what I did. So I started and I read 15 pages. I did not get very far. So I technically did surpass where I stopped last time because last time I stopped on page 40 and this time I got to page 45 so far. Uh, and so far I am not enjoying this. Um, I am not even really sure what the plot is yet because I really just have not made it far enough into it. Mostly my issues with the writing style because I'm not far enough into it yet to have a real opinion about the plot or the character but I just cannot get into the writing style. It is a more old-fashioned kind of writing style. It feels very affected. She also writes accents into the text, uh, which is something that I generally don't like. I have seen it done well in certain instances, but most of the time it's something that just kind of rubs me the wrong way and especially is not working for me in this case because I already am not enjoying the writing in this and I'm finding the writing style overall just to be one that I can't get into the flow of the writing or the story and so then having the like accents written into the text just kind of trips me up even more and is even more of like preventing me from getting into the flow of it uh, which is why it took me a very long time <laughs> to just read 15 pages last night. Um, so I am going to read a little bit further into this before making a decision, even though I feel like we all know where this is going, but I want to at least finish the first chapter. I didn't even finish the first chapter yet. So I'm going to read another 10 pages because that's all I need. I just need to read 10 more pages in order to finish chapter one. Um, and then I'll see how I'm feeling after those 10 pages if I want to move on to chapter 2 or if I'm going to make a decision. So I will chat with you later. So I have made some progress, I've made some decisions, so I thought I would do a little check-in. It is Friday afternoon now. Uh, I made some progress on the Game of Kings. I did finish chapter one, and I got five pages into chapter two, and I've decided that this is a DNF, which I think is a surprise to no one. <laughs> um, but I just am so much not enjoying reading this. Um, I'm not really interested in the main character or the plot that's starting to take shape. I know I'm not very far into it yet and normally with a book that this, a book this length, because this is like 550 pages, normally I would try to give it like 100 to 150 pages because sometimes it takes books a little while to like get going. But I just am not interested in any of the things that are happening or any of the people so far and I just really don't like the writing style. I don't think it's poorly written, but it is so much not a writing style that works for me. I just feel like I am dragging myself through it and I'm not enjoying my time and I don't want to force myself to read this. So it's a DNF. Uh, I did start another book, so I decided to pick up The Dark Tide by Alicia Jasinska. I took off the dust jacket, but this is The Dark Tide. Um, and so far I read the first six chapters. I'm about 50 pages into this. So what I have gathered about the plot of this so far is that it's set on this island. There's a city on an island and they're kind of always in danger of the ocean destroying the city. Years ago they made a deal with some witches that every year they sacrifice a boy from the city to these witches who then sacrifice him to the ocean and then that will protect their city from the ocean for another year. The way they do this is that every year there's a festival that they call the Revel and while they are at the Revel uh, the queen, the witch queen, who's the one that steals the boy, like picks one of the boys and kind of carries him away. The point at which we are starting the story, it is the day of the revel for that year. Our main character is named Lena. She has a brother who 
apparently is very attractive and she's convinced that he's going to be the one who is kidnapped by the queen because apparently there are no other attractive boys in the city and he's like the most attractive one. So she's convinced that he is going to be kidnapped. So she tries to lock him up in his bedroom so that he can't go to this revel. Um, because apparently you can only be taken by the queen if you're at the revel, but if you're anywhere else in the city, she won't take you. Anyway, she tries to lock him up and he like climbs out a window and goes anyway. So Lena goes and chases him to the revel and she enlists the help of this other boy named Thomas who for one thing Lena is in love with and for another thing he is the only person who a couple of years ago was chosen by the witch queen taken away and then somehow was let go and he came back no one knows what happened how he did it but ever since then they think that the deal that they had with the witch queen slash slash ocean has not been working as well and they kind of blame him for that. So she enlists his help to help her find her brother. Uh, and then they're at the revel and Thomas, the boy who she's in love with, uh, gets taken by the queen, which they thought was not possible because he had already been taken once and let go, but he's poofed away and Lena wants to go chase him down. That's the setup that I have gathered from these first 50 pages. Um, and so far, my what are my thoughts on this um i feel very just like bland about this book so far uh like i think there are some interesting ideas to it there are some similarities that this has to other books that i have read so i like some of the ideas behind it but i just don't think i like the delivery of it that much the writing is kind of bland it's very straightforward it also is very um like there's not a lot of subtlety to her world building, the way that she writes characters or emotions. It's very like, here's a piece of information, this is why it's important, and this is how this person feels. It just like tells you exactly. Even though it's very blunt with the way that it does like world building and characters and talking about emotions, there are still things that I don't totally understand. <laughs> like there are things about the world building, and then I don't understand her brother's motivation. Um, in terms of like character motivation and and like emotions because there's kind of this like I don't know I feel like he has kind of shallow motivation because he wants to go to this festival so that he can buy a spell for Lena because apparently this festival is like the only place where people can get magic they can buy spells from the witches so like that entices people to go I can understand that but like there's a spell that he wants to get that for one thing is for something stupid it's not even like it's an important spell and for another thing lena has specifically told him like i don't want this spell i don't want you risking yourself she literally locked him up in a room so that he couldn't go and yet he still went like i don't understand his motivation it just feels like one of those things that sort of just had to happen in order to move the story forward it didn't really have to make sense it just like needed to happen for the story so where i'm at right now i feel like i'm gonna keep going a little bit more in this um because i want to see where this goes i think these first 50 pages pretty much were the setup for the story i think i've reached the point where it's going to get into the actual plot now so i want to see where that goes so i'm going to keep reading um there isn't anything about this that i I'm hating. There also isn't a lot that I'm particularly liking. It's just very neutral in the middle for me. So at the moment, I'm really understanding why this has gotten a lot of very lukewarm reviews because that is also how I am feeling. So I got a little further into The Dark Tide. I read to about page 120 and then I skimmed another like 20 or 30 pages. Uh, and from the fact that I put the dust jacket back on, you may be able to tell that I decided to DNF this, uh, which is a little bit surprising to me because even though it is in this DNF vlog, uh, I still gave this a one on my like scale of how likely I am to DNF it because I thought that this one had a solid chance. but. Pretty much it's just that all of the things I was saying before about it I think are still true. 
getting farther into the plot of this didn't really change my feelings about the world building, the characterization, the character motives. It all just feels very surface level and it's not terrible but it also just doesn't excite me. I just don't really feel like reading this. Um, and like this is a book that I very easily could finish because it's very easy to read, it reads fast, like it's pretty short, it would be easy to complete. But is this the way that I want to spend my reading time? Not really. Anyways, so Dark Tide's a DNF, so that means I only have one more book for this vlog, which is The Gilded Wolves by Rashni Chakshi. Uh, I haven't started this one yet, but I probably will start it uh, tonight or tomorrow. And yeah, I really don't know what to expect from this one. This is the one that I gave a three on my rating scale of how likely I will D I am to DNF it. So I really, it could really go either way. So I will start this one soon and I will check back with you and let you know what I think of it. Hello, so it has been a few days since I last talked to you. So I don't really remember where I left off with this, but I have been reading The Gilded Wolves. Uh, I'm about a third of the way into this now uh, and overall I'm enjoying it so far. Um, I don't really care about the plot at all uh, and I also am not that into the puzzle solving element of this because it's about this heist where they're trying to track down and acquire uh, these like ancient magical artifacts and along the way in order to do this they have to like solve different puzzles and riddles and stuff like that and I just like don't don't care about <laughs> any of the puzzle solving parts of this. Um, I mostly am just reading it for the characters at this point. I do enjoy the characters a lot in this. I'm not like loving loving any of the characters but I do have I'm having fun with them. Um, I definitely have favorites though. My two favorites are Zofia and Tristan and the other ones are like also good but those two are my favorites and really I kind of ship them and I don't think it's going to happen because it really seems like the book is going in a different direction with this and also I think that she's going to like ship Zofia with somebody else. But I really want Zofia and Tristan to get together because there's, there's one moment in this where they mention that Zofia and Tristan pretty much just like info dump to each other about their like hobbies and interests and they both listen to each other like very attentively and like remember what the other one said I'm just like if that's not true love what is like having a person to just monologue to about whatever your interests or hobbies are and they actually listen and then they tell you all about their interests and hobbies like that's all I want in life like <laughs> That's true love. So I ship them together, uh, but I do not think that that is the direction that things are actually going in this book, which is sad. Uh, but yeah, so at the moment, I am enjoying this. Uh, I feel like it could be, you know, a contender for actually finishing this book, which would be exciting. Uh, but I will read a little bit farther and let you know what I think of it. So it's been a few hours, I have read some more, and I wanted to do just a real quick check-in before I go to bed to let you know that I'm DNFing this. <laughs> um, and it's not because I wasn't enjoying this, it's actually because I accidentally spoiled myself for something that happens in this, and normally spoilers, like knowing a spoiler wouldn't stop me from reading or enjoying a book. But in this case, it's because of a specific, like what the spoiler is, there is a particular character death that I found out about that I just was like, I'm only reading this book for the characters. I don't care about the plot or the puzzles or anything else that's happening. So if one, if like a character dies in this, I, like I'm out, I'm done with this. <laughs> so yeah, that's why I'm DNFing this. I guess now I have DNF'd all three books in this video. I really thought that I was going to have one that I finished. I thought I was going to finish this one, but apparently not. But it is late now and I have to get ready for bed, but I will do a wrap up for the vlog tomorrow. So I'll talk to you then. Hello. So it is finally time to wrap up this vlog. These are the three books 
that I attempted to read for this DNF vlog and I DNF'd all three of them which I guess the vlog is a success because the question was will I DNF these books and we discovered the answer which in every case apparently was yes I would DNF them. Um, my ability to predict whether I would DNF a vlog or DNF a book was a little all over the place. I was correct about this one because I gave this a five uh, rating on my likelihood to DNF. I was very wrong about this one because I gave this a one. I thought it was the most likely for me to finish. Did not. And then this one, it, I gave it a three so there wasn't really a way to be right or wrong about it. Um, for this I DNF'd it not because I wasn't enjoying it but because I found out about a spoiler that just kind of ruined the book for me. For these two, it was actually both of these were more about the writing except for like opposite reasons. <laughs> this one was because the writing was too like old-fashioned and affected and it just was a slog to get through and this one was more because the writing was very bland and simplistic uh, but I also didn't really like the way that the world building and characterization were done and I wasn't really engaged in the story. However for this book I do have some recommendations based on uh, some like similar plot elements so if you thought this one sounded interesting or have already read this and were underwhelmed by it I have two recommendations for you both by Tessa Grattan who I love. So if the part of the dark tide that appealed to you was that there is this city that made a deal with a supernatural force for protection and in exchange they have to sacrifice a boy but something has gone wrong with that deal then I would recommend Strange Grace. This is a very similar premise. There's a village on the edge of a forest that has made a deal with the devil that lives in the forest for protection and in exchange every seven years they sacrifice the best boy from their village. But something has gone wrong with that deal and we're following a group of friends who have to figure out um, how to protect their village and also protect their friends because they don't want their friends to be sacrifices. Uh, Tessa Grattan's writing is always beautiful. She does amazing nature atmosphere. This also gets a little like a little horror-ish. There's a little bit of body horror in it. So if you want something that is dark and atmospheric, I really love this one. Although don't go into it for a whole lot of plot because I always say this book is like 90% vibes. It's really, it's really for the atmosphere. If the part of the dark tide that appealed to you was about uh, someone getting kidnapped by a witch and then their friend has to save them but ends up falling in love with the witch and there's a female female romance then I would recommend Nightshine by Tessa Grattan. In this there is a prince who is kidnapped by a sorceress. The best friend who is our main character sets out to save the prince and along the way falls in love with the sorceress and finds out more about herself and her powers uh, and as I said it does also have a female female romance in it. So we have reached the end of this experiment. Uh, let me know if you have DNF'd anything recently because as you know, I have just been in a DNFing mood recently. Um, also, let me know if you thought this was interesting, if you'd want to see more of these. This video is a bit of an experiment because I'm not sure if this will be interesting to people to uh, go into a vlog kind of with the mindset of DNFing, but I might make more of them because I found it uh, motivating and helpful to have you all to check in with to keep me accountable for actually like getting through some of these books and making decisions and whatever decision I make I'm gonna have to stick to because now you all know. <laughs> so these books will not be going back on my TBR shelf. So yeah let me know what you thought of this. Thank you all for watching and until next time bye!